What you're witnessing is a sunrise ceremony on Alcatraz Island, a gathering of Native American tribes from across the country to honor a hidden piece of this island's history, a history that is more relevant today than ever before. My name is Lenata Warjack, a member of the Shoshone Bannock tribes of Idaho. Alcatraz wasn't always a notorious federal prison or tourist attraction. Long before that, before European settlers even came to the United States, this island belonged to the Ohlone people. But in the mid 1800s, this sacred land was taken from the Ohlone during a time when the U.S. military seized control of the San Francisco Bay. The other thing you need to know about Alcatraz is that for 19 months, I lived here. On November 20th, 1969, I was one of the 89 students who sailed across the bay to reclaim Alcatraz for all Native people. We called ourselves Indians of all tribes, and we were there to take a stand, to demand an answer to why more than 500 treaties with the federal government promising to preserve Indian land, water, and human rights had been dishonored over and over again. For over 500 years, Native people have suffered through genocide and subsequent assimilation policies. These were policies that sought to stifle Native American culture by making our languages and ceremonies illegal policies that forced our parents and grandparents into government and Christian boarding schools as children so that they would forget their culture and policies that divided our land. In fact, millions of acres were taken from us by congressional acts as resources like gold, gas, and oil were discovered on native territories and reservations. Indians for all tribes occupied Alcatraz, turning it into a protest symbol for every native person across the country who wanted the centuries of ill treatment by the federal government to end. We lived here without adequate food, shelter, water, electricity or heat, much like our people on reservations and in native communities. We painted political statements on the walls and told our stories to the local and international press so that our protests could not be ignored. It was the first time all Native people had united to have their voice heard. And though the occupation ended after 19 months, our stand was not in vain. In 1970, almost immediately after the Alcatraz occupation, President Nixon announced new legislation in an effort to improve the lives of Native people. In a White House ceremony today, President Nixon signed a bill returning to the Indians some land seized in 1906, including Blue Lake, which is sacred to the Taos Pueblos. Over the next five years, the government transferred millions of acres of ancestral lands back to Native people and passed more than 50 legislative proposals supporting tribal sovereignty. The impact of Alcatraz was like a rock hitting the bay, sending a thousand ripples across the water as nearly a thousand events in support of Native Americans happened as the result of our action. Despite that, the treaties and laws created to protect Native sovereignty continue to be ignored. 
For the past 47 years, we have fought for our land, life, and water, engaging in the legal and administrative process to no avail. So here I stand again at the Osheti Sakoan camp in Standing Rock, North Dakota, fighting the same fight for our inherent rights. The land that surrounds you is the ancestral land of the Mandan and Standing Rock Sioux Nation, which over time has been desecrated by corporations in search of gold, gas, and oil. Once again, the federal government has not honored the laws and treaties they swore to uphold. In spite of the harsh conditions, thousands of people camped here to stop oil companies from building the Dakota Access Pipeline without our consent. But why I came here was because I knew that our people needed our help, and I knew that they, were, they needed more of us out there. Our people are strong. Our people will do whatever it takes to protect everybody, to protect our water, to protect our future, our children, everything. That's what they don't get. To many of us, the occupation of Standing Rock felt like history repeating itself. It was an example of Alcatraz's legacy, a resistance that ignited a spirit that brought us all together united in the fight to protect water and life. And though the government shut down the Standing Rock camp in February 2017, our fight did not stop after Alcatraz, and it won't be stopped now. Bye.